Hello again. Master Luke here with a 3 kilowatt RV. Here's the outside profile. It's kind of dirty. There it is. I want to show you my grounding system. I got up here. I started with the ground bond up on the main rail. The solar panels are mounted to. Come down with some 3 aug wire. Ground rod. I also got another wire. Yeah, the ground. And then down here, the electrical panel is behind this wall. I got its own dedicated wire coming down to a ground rod. These are 36 inch ground rods. What's nice, uh, the water table is only a couple feet down or less. Here where I'm at, I'm in a river valley. And I just moved the trailer for better sun for better sun access. When I pulled these out, they're wet, just below the ground. We haven't had rain for several days, and so uh, where I'm at, a 36 inch ground rod is somewhat effective. Um, the eight foot one really isn't necessary. One, I couldn't pull an eight foot rod back out of the ground when I move. And where I'm at here, the ground stays fairly wet so you get somewhat decent grounding. So that's the grounding system. I got a concern that I never really thought about with these solar panels up on the roof. Um, six 75 pound panels and two 50 pound panels plus the railing and stuff. And these trailers aren't made to hold weight on the roof and walls. So, my concern was the way the structure is, yeah, it's got a boxed-in frame that goes down the whole length. Uh, right above here is the battery bank, which is about six, 700 pounds of weight on it. I put it just behind the axle. But my concern is, see how the walls here, the load bearing from the solar panel weight coming down, and on this wall here is the inverters and such on the wall, which may not have been a very good idea, is look at how the frame is tied. It's just got these cross pieces kind of welded over to here, to the wall. There's the battery vent there, the fresh air and taken to the battery box. So my concern is, these, these trailers are made for weight to be like, you know, underneath, in the center, like for a car or something. Not really weight on the roof and walls, because normally these trailers are pretty lightweight with the aluminum structure. And this being a lot of weight coming down on here because of the weight on the roof and on this wall, this ain't much here. You know, I don't, so I'm a little concerned here. I need to, before I go haul and butt down the highway, I probably need to consult with the structural engineer to make sure this might be safe. Because I may need to pull some of that weight off the, at least pull some of the weight off the walls inside and mount them up on the floor where the weight's supposed to be. So that was my concern. I just wanted to note that. I didn't want to install all this and not think about some of the uh, downsides. Right now I got this kind of shored up on the north face of the trailer to kind of give the solar panels more of a southerly tilt. Um, just a little bit, not enough to make the batteries uh, tilt the uh, acid out of the plates or nothing like that, but just enough to give a little bit more of a southern tilt towards the sun, kind of helps out. So anyway, that's the uh, tilting and the halfway decent grounding system that I have for an RV setup. Um, uh, th these things I pull out pretty easy. What I first do is take some pliers and twist it a little bit to break it free from any uh, bonding with the ground. And then once you twist it to break it free, then you can kind of pull up on it. It seems to slide right out. So that's what's nice for RV application and grounding. Uh, seems to be pretty effective. I haven't got the Mega Omer out yet, but I intend to to see how good this ground is. And that and the other ground rod down there. So anyway, that's the grounding system of the 3 kilowatt RV. And... Uh, a concern I had with the weight distribution with the uh, abnormal loads on the walls and 
the roof, so that's something I need to kind of look into to make sure I don't overlook that. Thank you for watching.